For this week's drive through review, I am here with Sarah Rankin, chef, author, and master chef finalist. And we are at Forbes of Kingeni to try out their food offering. So let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. The bao buns, which look really nice. What have you got, Sarah? I have got um, tempura crispy prawns, which also look pretty good. Yeah. And we've got some potatoes bravas. Potatoes as well. bravas with what looks like a chorizo kind of. Mm. Sugo sauce. Or we were slightly concerned when we first opened the potatoes bravas because it was just potato, but we got a cup with the sauce that we then poured <laughs> over it. There's a bit more to it than we yeah. really thought, <laughs> thankfully. Good meaty big prawns, actually. Mm. And you can hear just from us biting it yeah. how crispy it is. I'd love a little dip with those, though. Yeah. I like think... a soy vinegar or something would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. And it might be obviously because we've done takeaway. Yeah. What would you rate these out of five? I'd give these a four out of five. I'd go four out of five as well. I agree. I think it's a nice meaty prawn, but it needs a dip. Mm. We're a dip guys. For sure. <laughs> absolutely. What is it that kind of made you know that you wanted to do cooking, that you wanted to be a chef? So I'm, I'm 50 and um, I applied for MasterChef. In the run, I was about 47, 47 at the time of recording, which okay. I, which is forever kind of on my CV. So in my head, I'm still 47. <laughs> and I love cooking. I've always loved cooking. My mum's a great cook. My granny was a great cook. And I've just kind of been around good home cooked food all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I what I like to cook. So I thought, I'm just going to apply for it. Mm -hmm. Just more of a, as a personal challenge. I had no idea about becoming a chef. I had no mm -hmm. idea about becoming a caterer or doing anything with it other than just as I kind of challenged myself mm -hmm. to see, can I do this? I went there with just zero expectations. It was my, my only thing was, don't make a fool of yourself on national television. That was the key thing. And also, um, don't be, don't get sent home first. So I thought, I just don't want to be the first person to go home. But you know, I wasn't, I was the last person to go home. Mm -hmm. That must be a really nice feeling. It was quite nice, yeah. I mean, obviously I'd like to have been the one holding the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was not to be. But Sarah right. told me a really interesting fact about herself. Uh, just now, which is that she's quite into taxidermy because there was um, a taxidermy heron inside Forbes of Kingeni. So. I, I love the decor in there. It's really nice, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's so welcoming. It really feels really warm, like a really warm place. And then there's little cool things to look at, like yeah. taxidermy, which yeah. is yeah, my kind of guilty pleasure. <laughs> I'm going to try these um, these the potatoes, potatoes bravas. Yeah, now, so I would good. expect these to have like a sour creamy sort of sauce on them as well, which they don't. But yeah. let's give them a roll often it's like the tomato-y kind of sauce, mm. the potato. They're good, but... You want that creaminess. I want that kind of, yeah, sour cream and sauce. Go. And have we, oh, is it... I think, I'm going to check if this is chorizo or... Tastes like maybe a pork and fennel sausage. Which is unusual, but not um, unwelcome. Not bad. No. no. I would say it's not traditionally Spanish. No. That doesn't mean I won't finish it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nice as well, like... Sometimes when you get potatoes bravas, it can be quite a big chunk of potato, mm. and sometimes it can be a bit underdone. Yeah, these are like dinky little sort of parmentier potato size, little yeah. dainty little dice. I'd give that a three out of five, I think. I'm going to coffee, Sarah, <laughs> and go for a three out of five as well. I think it is really tasty, but I agree. I'd like a bit more flavour in the sauce. The sausage, weird, but I rate it. Yeah. I think it's good. What does your life look like now, Sarah, following MasterChef? Well, yeah, very, very different, actually, mm -hmm. in, in the best way possible. So um, I've just written my first cookbook, Kith, Very which exciting. is released on the 18th of April, which is very, very exciting. Pre-orders mm. are opening now and, and going really well, which is mm. just wonderful. Um, I'm a private caterer. Um, I host supper clubs. I run cookery classes. Basically, I'm, I'm pretty much kind of full-time chef caterer mm. now, and I kind of never expected that that would be my life. And I'm, mm. I'm just so grateful that MasterChef gave me that, you know, that opportunity. It's just mm. wonderful. And what would you kind of say Kith is all about? So Kith, really, when I when I went into MasterChef, I thought I'm just, I'm not going to pretend that I'm something I'm not. I'm not going to do foams or molecular or any, the stuff that isn't me. I'm going to cook the stuff that I cook at home mm -hmm. and just learn as much as I can and elevate the stuff that I cook at home. So we cook with a lot of game. Um, we cook really seasonally. I eat really seasonally. I live in Perthshire, so I'm incredibly lucky that I've got an amazing larder on my doorstep, mm -hmm. which is fabulous. So it was really just that. And I thought, I want to showcase Scottish produce. And I want to showcase that eating seasonally and sustainably is a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so really, I just went with that. And Kith kind of just evolved from that. The best way to show someone that you care about them is to feed them. Mm -hmm. 
Annette, I don't think there's anything like that. And Kith, I think, I hope, is just a series of recipes that just show your love. Mm -hmm. Like food is a love language. I really yeah. love that. Is that a kind of way that you show your love language as well? Yes, because I do a lot of shouting normally. <laughs> so uh, to kind of let people know I actually do care about you, then I'll just give them a plate of food. Yeah. The only thing about bow buns I always find is they are. There's yes. no way to do that daintily. No, it's going to go all it's over. It's going to be everywhere. You just need to just lean into it. So, yeah, mm. here's the messy bow bun. It's probably going to go everywhere. I'm standing by with napkins. <laughs> Thank you. It's well filled. It actually looks fantastic. I don't think I could finish no, two No, you couldn't finish two. No way. No. That's, that's a lot of food. Yeah, that is heaps. Is it beef? Yeah. Yeah, it's beef. It's so lovely. It's really nice and tender. Got a really nice spice to it. Mm. And the bun itself, I haven't actually bitten into because I've just got a mouthful of meat there, which I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do that bit out. Mm. It looks really fluffy. Really nice and fluffy. Oh, that's lovely. Is that your top out of the three? Yeah, it's yeah. got to be. But there is certainly no way to do that with no. any kind of <laughs> any kind of grace or dignity. There's no grace involved. <laughs> it's all over my face. But miraculously, not on my shirt. So I think so I deserve far. more. The bow buns were absolutely amazing. I think I'm going to give five out of five for those. What is the importance of eating seasonally? Do you think people understand the importance of that now? No, maybe not. Um, so for me, the kind of seasonal eating thing is it just makes it makes sense it makes sense environmentally mm -hmm. it makes sense for our bodies and um, it makes sense for our farmers for our rural communities because if you're eating something that's grown in your area you you're buying it from that area so you're keeping money in your own economy in your own local economy which mm -hmm. is brilliant in your own community and also like we know from the area that we're in here in angus we've mm -hmm. got incredible soft fruits here right mm -hmm. carcagaudi soft fruits so look forward to them you know with real yeah. pleasure and relish when they come in the summer because if you buy a strawberry in november it doesn't taste like a strawberry no. it just tastes wet <laughs> you know and you you cut them in half and they're really hollow inside yeah. and there's no joy in that and i just think food should always bring you joy so look forward to seasons you know that's how we used to eat before mm -hmm. supermarkets kind of decided how we ate i did a cooking class yesterday and a, and a lady said to me oh could you use plums and I'm like, i'll use whatever free food you want to give me <laughs> everyone's got chickens these days mm -hmm. even in quite urban areas people have chickens so if you can get fresh eggs like that from good people mm -hmm. who rear chickens then that's a good thing that's one tiny little thing you can do that's you know helps i am um, grew up in the countryside in aberdeenshire and we had chickens and i just absolutely loved that like fresh eggs literally yeah. whenever like on tap yeah. there's too many eggs yeah but no more <laughs> alas but maybe i should get chickens in broy fair there you, yeah, maybe <laughs> you might could. be flat <laughs> maybe you could i mean i'd be interested to see how that would work well i'm gonna let you finish because i'm gonna i'm gonna keep eating these <laughs> <laughs> they look so good i don't blame you <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We had a great time on our visit to Forbes and Kengeni. And if you want to read more of our thoughts, check them out below.